out and about for a nutrient, um, getting out to some of the studs that are uh, selling yearlings again with the nutrient sale. I'm catching up with Louise Tallman. Hello Louise. Hi Paul, how are you? Very well and it's a sensational here to, uh, day here at uh, Ballarat. We, we get these all the time, don't we? Yeah, yeah, always sunny. <laughs> it is indeed. Uh, the nutrient sales very quickly be, um, coming upon us. Uh, Sydney sale is going to be on the 20th of February. The Melbourne sale is not till the 3rd of April and it's one of the reasons I want people to be aware um, that it is on. Um, it's got a massive draft of horses including 25 uh, trotters from Harass to Trotters or Yabby Dam Farms. Um, which ones are we selling them as? As Yabby Dam Farms. I always get confused. I don't know. <laughs> it's one of those. Once, they, once they're no longer a breeding prospect and they become a racing prospect, they go under Yabby Dam Farms. If anyone's wondering, that's how it works, isn't it? Yeah, so Pat's um, breeding enterprise is Yabby Dam Farms. Yep, and that's yep. where it goes. Uh, first. Are you excited? Yeah, look, yeah, we're excited now. The horses have been in for uh, two weeks. They came in um, Monday fortnight back and um, yeah, they've just had their first weekend back in the paddock. So they're um, very chilled today, which is, um, yeah, really good. Yourself and Gary, over the years, you, you've enjoyed uh, dealing with the young horses um, and the likes and to be able to work in with a farm like um, Pat's got here with all the staff and that. It's uh, must be exciting. Yeah, look, we've had a few um, issues just on the farm with um, a couple of staff members going down with some injuries, so um, <laughs> it made us a little bit short. And um, yeah, so I've been pulled out of the office for a little while. And um, yeah, but I really enjoy it. It's actually easy to market horses if you actually work with them. You should never laugh at someone's misfortune, but I'm sure if Marika sees that, she'll understand what the little the little giggle was for. Um, firstly, the draft of horses is exciting. What do we work out? There's 12 Volksteads. For a Tw start. Yeah, 12 Volksteads. So this is. Uh, the first one of course went through the uh, APG Brisbane sale and sold for big dollars of course um, yesterday and yeah we've got 12 going through our draft I think there's a number of other Volsteads going through the other APG sales but yeah we've got 12 you know incredibly well bred um, yeah well reared horses to sell yeah at the nutrient sale. He's such an exciting horse Volkstead and um, hopefully coming back next season um, but he, he didn't return last season unfortunately but the, the progeny that I've been able to see they just look sensational they look goers yeah, look, they're really, really nice types and um, yeah, from the small amount of work that's been done with them in the lunge yard here, they're um, yeah, improving um, with each um, time they're going around. So yeah, they're easy to deal with. So We're going to be doing a lot of things over the journey. We're not going to single out any, any of these um, horses, but I just did an interview actually with Anton just there before after the I'm Ready Jets win on the weekend. Quaker Jet, um, there's three Quaker Jets as well in the sale, which offer up some unique pedigrees. I was just actually looking at one and I think it said France, 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 New Zealand and then France all the way through to USA. Some of the best bloodlines in Australia, in, in the world, don't worry about Australia, but in the world coming through some of these horses. Look, yeah, I was leading uh, the Ready to Shine filly um, and Pat said that he'd been waiting years to be able to breed a Quaker Jet out of a Ready, ready Cash mare. So, you know, she's the uh, the first progeny on the ground that he's been able to do that, breed, breed the filly and then, you know, breed a foal from her. He's also got a couple of little different ones in there, Pat, which I will be highlighting a lot closer to the sale, sale date and the likes. People to be able to get out and inspect these horses and, and have a look at the draft. Um, I would imagine this time of year would be probably by appointment because, I mean, it's a fair way out still from the sale. Yeah, look, we'd probably, you know, um you know, like people to come, you know, give us January to just get the horses in order and, and for us to be happy with them. And yeah, but yeah, if they just give us a call, we'll organise something that's convenient for both parties. Must keep up with the uh, website um, because I know there'll be some headshots going out, there'll be some photos, there'll be teasers going out all the time right through to April. Yeah, that's right. We're actually just collating um, our booklet that's going to be advertising um, this draft. Um, we're just putting the final touches that. So yeah, we're taking the headshots today for that to go out um, in that booklet. So hopefully we'll have that out to people by the middle of February um, at the latest. So um, if you would like to have that, if you didn't receive one of our booklets last year, um, but you would like one, just um, yeah, get in touch with me either via email or by phone and we'll get one of those to you as well. And your email is louise at harastatrotters? Yep, .com.au. Thank you. I forget, always forget those last, those, um, last two little bits. Um, good spread too. Colts and fillies this year too. Um, it's almost 50-50. Yeah, we've got 13, 13 colts and 12 fillies, so yeah. Well, it's as close, yeah. as close as you can get. Yeah, I was actually right. working that out in, uh, in, the, uh, in the noggin. As far as with nutrient go to Pat's commitment to one, the sales, 
um, series. Um, he's got two race series coming up, so these horses they will be eligible next year to be racing the um, the two races, one for the Colts and one for the Phillies. Vied at sixty two and a half thousand. But then also the year after, which I think is 2024, which is scary to say those sort of digits, they'll be racing for 125,000, again, Colts um, and Phillies. Yeah. Pat is putting a beautiful draft of horses into this sale, but he's also putting his faith in the sale as well. And I think that's key. I think anyone that knows what Pat does behind the scenes um, would be well and truly aware of how much he likes to grow the trotter. And it's and it's key, and it's a key component of what Harasta Trotters and Yabby Dan Farms is all about. Yeah, well, the, the main things, you know, Pat's, you know, initially when you sort of put the Harada Trotters hat on, it's to um, import the best bloodlines we possibly can for breeders. Um, and then, then the next part of it is, um, you know, giving the breeders and somewhere to sell the horses and make it attractive for people to want to actually buy those yearlings so you know by Pat sort of you know having a commitment to um, yeah fund the the race series it's sort of yeah it's it's a whole big picture it's a big circle you know he's bringing the stallions out or accessing that frozen semen you know from the world's best um, you know we're lucky enough to get Bold Eagle here this year which was a relief but you know yeah it's um, exciting times to come. Oh absolutely his breed also he just continually breeds winners right around the country and even right here at Ballarat um, on the weekend like um, we said there before about I'm Ready Jet and she was sensational but a horse like Nor Key yeah. um, who just keeps getting the job done year after year she's just such a bonny little filly and I think it's like 178 there's a half sister to her in the sale but he gets so many horses around the whole countryside winning races, doesn't he? Yeah, and look, you know, wasn't it nice to see, you know, those two horses win at, you know, at Vic Bread size, you know, on um, New Year's Eve too, you know, Parisian artist and yep. um, little fancy, you know, sort of thing. So, you know, they're, um, you know, being trained by other trainers as well, sort of thing, and other owners have got them. So, um, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's all, it's all up. Uh, you know, upwards. Unfortunately, I've got to chase one of those. I think it's La Serena. I've got to chase her in a couple of weeks in uh, in Melbourne. In the uh, there's a, a race series on at the minute, so I was sort of anyway. It's a, it's all good, but it's raising the profile of the trotters. It's making it. They're, they're so hard. They're so much harder to win a race now, and it's so much more fun to watch. I think. Oh look, you know, yeah. I think you know, years gone by when I first was introduced to you know harness racing. You know, it sounds a bit scary, but 30 years ago, you know, you'd see a two-year-old trot race, and majority of them would gallop, wouldn't they? And as long as you had one that was bomb-proof. Um, you'd win quite a few two-year-old races, but now they not only trot but go really fast. So I can re I can remember the uproar. Actually, it was a day at Maribor, and it was the first day that the stewards were told that if horse gallops twice, they've got to be banned and uh, sent back to the trials. And the uproar from a lot of the trainers at that stage. Now they they just trot like you know those days. It's just evolved so much it's not funny yeah you know and you know the nutrient sale that's out there there's you know quality drafts both paces and trotters you know for people new buyers to come in you know existing buyers you know trainers to come and yeah get access to some of the best bred um, horses in Australasia and I think that's key as well it's not with as far as promoting the trotters and for this trot series and the races that it are harass trotters have got 25 ripping horses um, going through the sales but th there's a lot of competition because there is a lot of horses from a lot of other farms yes. getting involved and it's, it's really exciting and it's exciting to see how the trotters are growing. Yeah, well, that's right. And then, you know, in a couple of years' time when we have the race series, you know, how good is it going to be to some of these, see these horses racing, you know, and probably, you know, breaking, you know, records because, you know, they're so well bred. I reckon it's going to be scary when you see the fillies, some of the, especially the breeding of some of these fillies that are offered up here um, going forward. You know, you go five, six years ahead. The depth in our trotters are going to be enormous because there's just going to be so many classy fillies that people are going to get an option of buying here yeah. um, and being able to then breed from them and then hopefully put them back through the sales themselves Yes. Uh, and reap the benefits from it and um, you know put us right up on the world stage. Yep, no, definitely. So, um, yeah, don't forget it. The other thing is we're having our open day here on March the 20th. Um, so, yeah, that'll be in our booklet that we sent out as well. It'll be on our website. But, yeah, we'll be having that here um, on in the morning. Um, I think it's 11 o'clock on March the 20th. And that's, I will be live streaming it. Or I'll definitely be recording it. We, we may be live, we should be live streaming it, but whether we do or not, we'll work that part out as it gets a bit longer. But we want people to be here because yeah, it's all well good to sit back and watch it. 
but yeah. you've got to be here, um, smell the horses, watch the horses, and you get to see things too. Like uh, you'll get to see things behind the scenes, and you're going to go, "Oh, I like that," because the horse you know, just might be standing there while the girls are brushing it up and getting it ready. You get to see those extra little things yeah. uh, going on behind the scenes. Yep. No. Look, they're um, yeah, quality draft, and yeah, we look forward to um, offering it up this year. And as always, Pat's mm -hmm. food as well on the on the side isn't That's too right. bad. Yeah. He does look after us pretty good that way, doesn't he? Yeah. No. No. It'll be um, yeah. Come and look at the horses and then fill your bellies. It will be indeed. Louise, thank you very much. You've actually wobbled out of that camera. I don't know how long you've been out of that shot. You're gonna, your daughters are going to tell you off for that. Don't you worry about that. She's back in it now. I didn't realise you'd wobbled off until I looked at it then. But one, thank you very much for joining me. But also, um, well done for what you guys are doing here. Um, it's going to be exciting. Um, and there's you know, going to be a lot of fun. So stay tuned to both channels um, going forward. Yep, that's right.